Well, what's up everybody? Williston, North Dakota, February 12th, 8 a.m. It currently is negative 15 degrees outside with zero wind chill. It is dead calm outside. The sun is actually about to rise. I uh, am going to call this the oil field uh, video because I'm going to talk about expenses up here and uh, truth and lies about making money up here. Also, we're going to do the uh, water cup test where I just throw a cup of water out the door and we'll see if it actually does turn to uh, mist, dust, ice, particles or if it actually uh, will stay as water when it hits the ground. Might actually just throw it at the neighbor's trailer. That's how boring it is up here. It's <laughs> we'll get into that. But uh yeah, so before I drove up here from the South uh South Dakota region of the the Black Hills region of South Dakota, uh people were like, "Hey, you can go up to North Dakota, work in the oil patch, make $10,000 a month." It's all just a load of garbage. Is there people that make that much? Yeah, but you know, it's like the percentage. So, majority of people up here are working insane hours. Uh, the average work week is like 120 hours, 12 hour days. So, I gave it a shot uh, working for an unnamed oil company. And uh, to be honest with you, maybe uh, in 2012 when the oil boom was going on, yeah, but now there ain't no $10,000 a month. I mean, even the guys that have been here like three years, they're making maybe seven thousand a month. And let me tell you something about that seven thousand. It's life money. It's lifetime just wasting your life away. You go to work, you get off work, you eat, clean up, go to sleep, you get up, you go to work, you eat, sleep, go to sleep. That's it. That that is your life up here. So if you wanna make 70,000 a year, maybe 80,000 a year, and work 120 hours a week? Makes no sense to me. Uh, coming from the East Coast, uh, middle grade job, you can work 40 hours a week, maybe 50 hours a week, make 70,000, 75,000. Uh, there's obviously not that much up here in this region, but what also is a little questionable to me is why a lot, most of these people aren't from here. So you would think people from here would work these crazy hours because there's nothing else to do up here. There's farming, which I think makes zero money, or there's oil, oil and gas. But a lot of these people are coming up here from far away. You would think they would just go to like a city like uh, Denver or, or, or one of the larger cities where they're, where they're from in their state. But I guess, you know, everybody's got their reasons. But uh, to be honest with you, my take on this is it's not really worth it. Uh, you work in some jobs two weeks, two weeks off. So you're on for two weeks, then you get two weeks off. So only working six months a year. Is that worth it? Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Most of the other ones, though, some of them are six and two. But they all have crazy overtime. So you're not working an eight-hour day. You're working a 12-hour day, a 14-hour day. 16 hour day so corporations will factor in a work week and they know how to jip you on your overtime so if you think you're making all this crazy overtime you're actually not depending on when your company starts and ends the work week so after the 40 hours obviously is going to be all overtime but if that overtime resets depending on when your days are off then you know you might only be making two days worth of overtime I would definitely look into it before coming up here because right now the 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 time versus the amount of money you're making and the climate like this is brutal up here negative 15 out do you want to be out for 12 14 hours 16 hours a day in this I was out in it for an hour and a half with no wind and the cold just slowly seeps through your gloves slowly seeps through your boots it, it becomes miserable the other week 
it was negative 18 and there was like 30 mile an hour wind that was unsurvivable you you anything that was exposed instant pain the second you would walk outside you'd start coughing the second you breathed in it was just that cold that you, you're you're like esophagus like it just wouldn't it didn't like that cold air going in <clears throat> your eyes would shut then your eyes will tear your nose will start running and then it just freezes it, it it's it's insane it's really crazy up here uh, I give these people a hell of a lot of credit up here uh, they're all nice they're all great people that I've worked with but I gotta tell you it to me it's not worth it no it's you're, you're literally working and then you're just gonna you know one day just keel over it's it's insane hours up here for improper compensation under the circumstances it's just so you go to the gas station up here and they're charging you almost four dollars for a gas station cup of coffee now you go to McDonald's you get the large coffee for a dollar what why the gas stations it's because they can get away with it it's it's insane you go uh, Dave's famous uh, restaurant there I've been to two this is the second one in this town it was eighteen dollars for a full rack of ribs with like two sides here twenty eight dollars everything here the prices are just jacked up ridiculous you're not like in Hawaii you're not getting a great view you're not in a tropical island it, you're you're you've seen the trailer pit out back here I mean it's it's the trailer graveyard just represents basically this whole area and the background with no trees the wind here has a 100 mile running start so when that wind gets over here it's just cranking really shocking to me so I was just thinking about that you know 8 a.m. sitting here windows all all frozen up if you can see it so we're gonna go outside been here for what three months now I've about had it it's just unless somebody's gonna pay me some insane amount of money it's it's not worth doing it's there's, there's nothing to do up here you got the Missouri River pretty awesome but how many times are you gonna take a ride down to the river and you know you just get bored of it I don't got a boat so do some ice fishing maybe but outdoor temperature is just miserable so what I also noticed even though it's negative I don't know this is negative 15 but when I go on the other screen it says negative 18 the water actually still works in the camper right here so the only thing I can think of <clears throat> is the water is working because there's no wind somehow the wind is affecting the pipes under the sink here and it's getting to the uh, the water supply and freezing it but even though it's negative 18 hot water doesn't work that's done still it's been done for a while but the cold water is still trickling so let's fill this up yeah I'm gonna go toss it right outside probably right at the neighbor's camper there see what happens it should be good enough this is gonna be interesting so uh, I don't got really much on but my pajamas some slippers let me see how it is outside at, at negative 15 negative 18 degrees but from what I'm looking out there it's uh it's looking pretty calm there's no wind out there so I might put on I think I'm gonna switch over to the flip-flops time to put any boots on all right meet you outside I'm just gonna throw this or what? Watch. Ready? So yeah, that definitely stayed as 100% water. <laughs> oh, that is funny. So yeah. Some guy going to his job for another 12 hours. 
so yeah that did not freeze that stayed as liquefied water uh, it's actually frozen on there now but you know is what it is <laughs> so, it's pretty cold out like I'm starting to feel it through my clothes right now but it's it's definitely nothing compared to when the wind is blowing like it's it is unlivable when the wind is blowing so did our test I'm outside here I'm sure everything in the cooler is frozen a few inches of snow the sun's coming up Trailer Graveyard. Well, all right, I'm starting to feel it now. Yeah, it's pretty cold. My hands are hurting. So, uh, it's so calm and peaceful though, you know? Like, I hear a couple birds, but for the most part, it's just like dead out here. Nothing wants to be outside, nothing wants to be around. Alright, check in with you guys later. Alright, I'm back. I actually, my hands are like frozen. It is a lot worse than I thought out there. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's like you couldn't stay out there for too long at all unless you're like fully, fully covered up. If you go out when there's like 30 mile an hour winds at negative 15, negative 18, you'll last maybe like, I'd say 15 seconds before you just go berserk and like run off and just want to kill yourself. But it's not too bad. It's more of a a seeping in it just slowly sinks in through your clothes you feel the clothes get cold then you start to feel it on your skin then you're like all right now I'm starting to feel that pain in my fingers and that pain and like you know my whole stomach starts getting like cold it's just it just seeps through everything compared to when the winds blowing when they say the wind cuts they're not lying. That's literally what it does. So it'll like, you'll be totally covered up, face mask, everything. But you have the eye, you know, slits here. And you'll have maybe like a piece of your neck exposed. Wind will just cut at it. The air just, it's like, it feels like it's burning. Like a, like a razor's cutting you. So it'll just like start, like searing almost. It's like, uh, very similar to a burn. It feels as if like, somebody's like, you're getting hit with like boiling water or something. Very lightly. It's just burning instantly. And I'm not talking like it takes time. It's it's instant. Like it just, it's really bad when the wind is blowing. This is like, I could definitely walk from here to the shower room about 100 feet. I mean, you saw me standing out there. For me to walk 100 feet wouldn't be bad. I would be hard pressed to do it if the wind was blowing 30 miles an hour at this temperature. If I bundled up with the, with the Carhartt, this this coat's pretty good carhartt coat if i had had this on you know it would be a lot better look at that what is that nasty stains on it so i got two heaters going here this one's going it's on the low setting this one over here the uh, firebox as i call it because it's just a death trap waiting to burn down the camper that one's at 1500 watts that's on high so it's keeping it pretty warm in here actually keeping it real warm here now that i just came in from outside so we're at 60. not too bad at all so yeah when i got back this morning around six i didn't have it really on high i actually had the stove going too so it was it was 50 when i first got back but it's gone up 10 degrees and the sun is now coming in here so the sun coming up is uh definitely gonna melt melt the frost off the uh window but there's no reason to be up here. You get claustrophobic sitting in my 20, 
that's the other thing I wanted to mention. 20 feet by 8 foot box here I'm in. Guess how much it costs in electric a month at this trailer park to heat it. Because I got these heaters running all day. My electric bill to heat this box, to heat this box, is $150 a month. Yeah, that's right. That thing running 24-7. 1,500 watts. Plus what I think on the low setting over there is probably like 700 watts. Craziness. So, sun's going to melt this frost off the window. Man. The other thing up here, it is February. When it's like late December-ish, early January, sun don't come up till like 8.30 in the morning. So it's it's 8.20 right now. It, it would probably be like more like 8.40 in the morning. So you have, it's just depressing up here. If the sun doesn't come up till 8.40, then it'll just go right back down at like 4.30. So you don't get much light, it's cold. You don't want to be outside, you're cooped inside. You know, there's really no reason to be up here. For anybody to be up here unless they're like somehow latched to farming with their property. Or they're making 100 plus G's a year doing oil field work. Which is, it's, it's, it's hardcore work. Covered in slop at the end of the day. Exhausted. I don't know how these guys do it. And that's, that's where I'm going to leave this one off. So we get to the next video that I'm making, which is about uh, the guy downtown in Williston when I first got here trying to break into my trailer. I have it on video, actually. So uh, that'll be my next video. But uh, just that last shout out. And everybody that's working up here, dude, I give them so much credit. Great set of guys I've met up here. And, uh, you know, they work so hard, you know. Should be making more money. All right, until the next video.